thank you for your time um, I need your attention to listen to this small presentation about make the planet a better place I want to start by asking you are we selfish against nature when using air conditioners in our cars and homes other creatures and even microbial organisms with the soil do not have such access to luxury so how can they possibly get air conditioners at least for survival i mean how much are we doing to prevent the effects of climate change on the animals in these troubling times humankind's intelligence questions global warming and associated climate change issues let me say a few things in line with my purpose in managing the free falling rainfall before i introduce myself i would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to say something about climate issues and sharing the knowledge that i published as a children's book series my name is mastol jugo adama i am originally from ethiopia and love to create job opportunities that restore nature and make the world a better place i am sure you are familiar with the well-known italian proverb give a man a fish and he will eat a day teach him how to fish and you feed him for his lifetime the challenge is teaching fishing for the majority of the community particularly in developing countries including ethiopia which also benefits the environment are the world's people on the right way of fishing to mitigate climate change for cumulative impact like most places ethiopia doesn't have any NGO that effectively teaches fishing without exploiting the environment in this regard i am trying to find a path to take Ethiopian society to the next level to implement effective fishing procedures that assures us to end poverty and play a role in cooling down the earth there should be an entry point for starting the process say to develop a given area what resource knowledge is vital to build a sound foundation at the beginning i personally would pick rainwater as more than 90 percent of food comes from its use the primary water source is rainwater since it comes where we are and replenishes all other sources like springs rivers ponds dams wells lakes and look around you you'll find water in different forms everywhere on the pla on this planet clouds rivers springs lakes and so on also the invisible ones you will find water in different forms or used to form different shapes and occupy most air spaces even in desert places therefore i can say that what matters for livelihood development and global warming are water movements including significantly water that we don't see invisible to us poverty and climate change mean the change of water from the optimum level in a given space and time i will repeat this my statement poverty and climate change mean the change of water from the optimum level in a given space and time example ocean levels snow amount cloud levels can be mentioned similarly forested land versus bare lands hot versus cold air temperatures in all these situations the amount of water in different forms is the major criteria 
in regard to climate change and as well as fighting poverty to highlight these issues i publish a scientific concept regarding rainwater and based on it i am writing children's books to inform the new generations about this about this it is a challenge to write everything with scientific terminologies focusing on educating children at various levels however when the book series is complete it describes the comprehensive conceptual framework i am following the first children's book that i wrote was titled water that force Likus environmental observation two main points of the book concerns were unless we know properly the more significant resource that covers a wide area our intention for change will not be practical second learning from reality is very important to figure out what best the environment requires from us and get back the benefits in a sustainable way third unless we know the basic primary steps whatever changes achieved will not be sound and sustainable so those are the three points i said two but those are three the second book was the floating water it discussed clouds that are very sensitive to global warming one the book is used to encourage most communities to plant and care for forests <clears throat> here is the major issues global warming affects the the movement and amount of cloud covers whatsoever we say the hurricane flooding it comes from the clouds whatever we say uh, wildfire it is due to uh, the void of clouds clouds are very important to bring shadow to the soil to the land uh, to bring water so that to cool down the earth and clouds should be in optimum level than excess climate change affects them to be excess in some parts of the world so the clouds are very sensitive to climate change learning about clouds reveals the secrets of nature once addressed can make people wealthy and healthy i wrote those books because our environmental leaders overlook little steps in considerable areas that make the world green like amazon forests it is not yet clear that africa including ethiopia gets vast and robust sunlight for nine months of the year it becomes the heat wave corridor that boosts global warming the same thing happens in countries like india and most asian countries as i said the intention is to teach how to fish however since it is a process of finding the reality with the second book its purpose goes beyond the target after i wrote those books i learned that we all are uniquely connected wherever we are through varied climates we live in the same atmosphere we share common resources water and air those two go in cycles in the environment without restrictions in borders including in ourselves whenever both are clean we all benefit and when not we all are affected so we should be united to do the right thing cool down the globe to have clean ample air and water in our environment to address this critical challenge knowledge of climate change is essential even though we use air conditioners we cannot escape from the environmental crisis because climate change affects all of us in terms of increases hurricanes and flooding aggravates droughts and wildfire risks our overall health especially breathing and disease transmission generally it reduces the anticipated environmental potential including food production water supply transportation energy and ecosystem what is the major issue with climate change global warming what is the source of warming sun since we created an invisible blanket with our emissions known as green gas greenhouse gases 
One way to see this situation is that our planet is continuously under attack with sunlight, which creates global warming, even though the sunlight benefits us in many different ways. I learned that both extreme cases, hurricanes and wildfires, are facilitated by the unwise activities that expose us to the sun's power. With the support of air pollution and deforestation, solar power attacks us and other creatures by creating high wind, storm, flooding or hurricane, extreme drought and wildfire, targeting numerous places. Now, we don't have enough time to defend our single planet Earth unless we take the proper steps everywhere as soon as possible. It is time to act in the right way to build the world's bioresource that can degrade greenhouse gases, thereby sustaining a safe climate everywhere. Let us do fight poverty. The poor countries like Ethiopia should be green, should be covered with forests. Get more forestation that can generate lots of cold fresh air on top of absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Reduce emissions, reduce any smoke. Imagine each smoke combined or cumulatively is a huge mess in this environment. Avoid war as fighting wastes time. It is better to deploy labor to treat the environment. The smoke from gunfires also pollutes the environment. Revise the school curriculum to educate new generations. And educate the society with the vast resources that keep the environment safe. The main focus within my ambitious vision is building a knowledgeable generation. I believe we do not yet understand the environmental system very well. Hopefully, you will join me to create awareness in our society so we can sustain our safe existence. My understanding is that the hidden opportunities from our environment include the different forms of water, gas, liquid and solid. This is one major opportunity and if we create a very nice system. The dissipating capacity of solar heat power. The solar heat power can be easily dissipated if we follow uh, scientific procedures. The air's ability to change weight, position and carry away heat and moisture. Air has its own advantage to transport moisture from a given area to others. The forest serving as air cleaning and conditioner. Forests have also a great potential to clean the air and provide a conditioner to the atmosphere. The ocean surface size. If the ocean surface size was small, it's, it's very hard to get rainwater. So the proportion of water body in this world helps us to get rainwater. Learning from evaporation. This tiny process cannot be seen with naked eye. However, cumulatively provides us with vast, tremendous rainwater worldwide. So the lesson is that whatsoever we do small thing, cumulatively has impact to the environment. Similarly like the tiny evaporation that is not easily visible with naked eye. The benefit of clouds. Clouds have many benefits in cooling the earth, have a shed and uh, providing us clean water. The free falling water. Imagine if there is no rainfall, if we try to create rainfall by ourselves, think of how much energy it costs us. And much more as the environment has a lot of secret resources for us. To tap all this is not easy, however, if we can do this, we will all know how to fish and our intelligence will not be in question that keeps our planet Earth comfortable to all living things. If we work hard with the proper procedures, as I said at the beginning, every one of us cumulatively, like the tiny evaporation process, can play a role in making the planet a better place.
ታንክዩ ቬሪ ማች ፎር ዮር ታይም ማስተዋል እጅጉ አደመ